Today we are inside a 2016 Jaguar F-Type taking a look at the Jaguar infotainment and navigation system. This is very similar to what we see in other Jaguar and Land Rover models except for the brand new recently announced Jaguar F-Pace that will receive a very different system that's significantly updated from what we're taking a look at here. The biggest thing you'll notice versus other luxury systems, of course, is that this is a touchscreen. It doesn't use a controller knob like you find in BMW, Mercedes, and Audi models. We have direct access buttons on the side of the screen, power button, park sense button, which really has nothing to do with this particular system. We have our HVAC button here because we do change some of the climate control settings in this screen. Home button, direct access for our mode button, audio video, our phone button, and the nav button right there. Now what we're seeing here up first is our smartphone connectivity feature that's now available in this particular system. I do have an iPhone 6 connected right here, and this is being generated by the iPhone. It has an interface that's somewhat similar to your iPhone itself. We have certain apps that can be installed. I really only have two at the moment, Stitcher and Parkopedia. Now you also can opt for a navigation app that integrates in this screen. However, it is an $80 purchase right here on your iPhone. And of course, this system does have navigation built in already, so I didn't download that. Now, this system does allow you to load the apps. It's actually starting the apps right over here on the smartphone, and then it's connecting with the screen. Of course, this particular app is a premium feature, so I'd actually have to upgrade that particular app to the premium one in order to use it. Now, back on the main screen, we do have access to our calendar or our contacts. So you can see right there, I had a call with someone right there on Wednesday morning. We have our contacts. We also have access to our music. Now, the music interface is done via Bluetooth, but the control is done via this screen right here. We do have access to uh, our complete playlists, albums, artists, genres, etc. We can click right over there to songs. You can also scroll right through the system just like you were on the iPod. We can click right there on a particular song. And of course, we have album art there on the left. Now, this system features two USB ports in the center console. In order to use this particular interface, you can only use one of those ports. Now, clicking back on over to the home menu, you'll notice that our audio input selection right here shows what was recently playing. So there is that integration there. We also have direct access to our phone, our climate control, and our navigation there. We also have two different screens on either side where we can direct access our in-control apps where we were before, take us home, setup, audio system, settings, iPod, etc. Moving over to the right side, this is where you'll find things like the ambient lighting control in this particular vehicle. You can change your color. So we can choose, for instance, red there, change its brightness, turn it on and off. We also have access on that particular side to our cameras. And then we have dynamic eye in our particular model, which allows us to see what's going on with the pedals. For instance, right there, if I press on the brake pedal, we have a G meter, we have a timer, and then we can adjust settings on this vehicle as well. So if I put the car into dynamic mode, you can change the way the engine behaves, normal or dynamic, the way the steering behaves, the way the suspension behaves, etc. Clicking the next button down, which would be this climate button right here, you can see that we don't have the full range of climate control settings via this display because some of them are controlled via those physical knobs below it in this particular car. So we can change which vents the air is coming out of along those lines right there. We can sync or unsync the system. You can always press the auto button below to do that. And then the climate control temperature adjustment is controlled via these knobs right on either side below the screen. Going once again back to the home menu, we'll go take a look at the Bluetooth phone interface. It's a fairly typical Bluetooth phone interface. We can do dialing right here on this particular screen. We can access our phone book, our last 10 calls, and we can change to a different paired phone in the system. We don't have the same kind of broader text messaging or MMS support that we do find in some of the competition. The power button obviously turns off the screen. We change to a Jaguar logo right there, and then it turns completely off if we press it again. Let's go to our audio screen right here. You'll notice that we do have several selections on the left-hand side. We have our radio, our satellite radio, and my music. The my music option includes all of our various input methods. So if we click that again, you'll notice that we have auxiliary USB CD changer, CD DVD player that's right there in the center console. It will also play video DVDs and our iPod interface right there. We also have direct access to the my video option right here in the system, but there's no disc in the system at the moment. I've now plugged my iPod in via the other USB interface in this particular system. So you can see how this browses around. You just click the browse button there. We click playlists, albums, etc. This operates very similarly to the other screens. We can jump ahead via these buttons right over here on this side of the screen. But you notice that unlike the other interface, we cannot scroll around in this particular system. So you do have to use these navigation buttons on the left side. One thing that's instantly noticeable in this particular system is a distinct lack of voice command ability like we do find in some of those competitive systems out there. Now there is an exception to that voice command comment and it's when we're using those smartphone integrated apps with the system. There is a voice command system built in with that Jaguar smartphone app 
but that's only available for the iOS devices at this particular time. And you would of course need to navigate with those apps in order to use it as well. So if we use this particular navigation app built right into the system, there are no voice commands for this at this time. Jaguar's navigation software is fully featured. However, it does look a little bit basic, a little bit older than some of the competition. Our particular model right now has the two screen view on, so you can actually see different zoom levels. You can easily turn that on and off with that button right there switch over to the single screen view as you can see in that instance right there. Now if we zoom out from the screen you will see that we do have topographic information displayed on this map and that can get a little bit busy depending on how hilly the area that you're in. So right here there's only one big mountain right there so it's not too bad on the screen but if you're in an area where it's very very uh, up and down then you will see an awful lot of lines on the screen which can get confusing. We have the ability to change between a 3D view, a north up 2D view, and a direction up 2D view right there in the system and you can see some of that additional topographic graphic information right down here on the left. Destination entry is fairly easy in the system. We simply choose an address, point of interest, intersection, etc. We also have some preset buttons right down there on the bottom. The interface is quite snappy, so we'll go ahead and enter something in right here so you can see what that looks like. Go ahead and enter the road. There we go. We'll go ahead and list choose Hinkley right there and uh, that would be in Burlingame and then we just hit go and we'll navigate right over there. We of course have voice navigation instructions and we have relatively limited traffic information on this screen. It's not as detailed in terms of traffic information as some of the competition out there but you can see that we do get little icons like that little arrow right down there and there's also a little black arrow up there in San Francisco. Now again, this software is due to be significantly upgraded in Jaguar and Land Rover models in the very near future. So do expect most of this to change for the better very soon. We will likely also see tighter iOS and Android integration, probably CarPlay and Android Auto available on those screens at that time as well. Now Jaguar is seemingly dedicated to the touchscreen layout in their vehicles and that actually does bode well for interfacing with something like CarPlay or Android Auto because those systems do seem a little bit awkward to use when you're just using a controller knob and dial. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes and we have been inside a 2016 Jaguar F-Type. If you want to check out that F-Type video, you'll find that particular one on my channel and I'll see you next week.